at times you will have to step out of your comfort zone to realize significant gains know your boundaries of your comfort zone and start practicing stepping out of it in small doses as much as you need to know the market you also need to know yourself can you handle staying in when everyone else is jumping around or getting out during the biggest rally of the century can you do that there is no room for pride in this kind of self analysis the best investment strategy can turn into the worst if you don't have the stomach to see it through in investing what is comfortable is rarely profitable says robert arnott hello and welcome in this video i am analyzing century textiles and industries with this video what we are trying to understand is if whether after looking at these fundamental numbers whether this company is worth investing other than that we are also trying to understand whether the company's management's efficiency is at a good level or not depending on that for indian companies especially the management efficiency is very important and to understand that on our own we'll need to look at these few fundamental ratios and then gauge for ourselves whether this company is worth investing continuing market cap of this company currently is 4500 crores and the price per share is 406 rupees which is uh, quite between its high of the 52 weeks and the low of around 219 rupees stock's current price earning is expensive at 31 times whereas if you look at the earnings per share is just 13 rupees whereas we are paying a price of 406 rupees for that one share which has earned a profit of 13 rupees book value is 318 compared to compared to where it was 3 years back it has definitely gone up from 246 rupees per share to 318 so the company's reserves or net worth has increased over these 3 years dividend yield is 0.74% the price to book is slightly above one times book value is 318 and for that we are paying 406 so price to book wise this is seems this seems quite reasonable return on capital employed is quite low at 9.7% this will need to be investigated as to why it is low and over the years or what was it on a 5 years or 3 years average basis return on equity is 13.1% this is also low and below my benchmark of 15% face value is good at 10 not diluted price to cash is 11 times compared to price to earning of 31 which signifies that the company is generating a good amount of cash against the earnings If you don't understand these ratios please check out my old videos which are very long of around 1 and 1/2 hour where I have explained in detail what each of these ratios mean return on equity over the last 5 years has seen a growth of 75.8% this will also need to be checked up whenever you have a very high growth rate compounded growth rate then that will need to be checked separately for these numbers but we want a positive growth rate in the return on equity and that should be growing over the years as the company increases its profits the market cap 5 years back was 2900 crores 3 years back was 5300 and currently it is at 4500 so we are getting it below where it was 3 years back at 5300 crores so it has not generated profits or gains for the investors from the last 3 years at least from 5 years back yes it has that we'll check it out a little later on when we look at returns over 3 and 5 years number of equity shares currently outstanding in the market is 11.2 crores operating profit margin of the last 5 years also on average is slightly below my benchmark of 15% return over the last 1 year is negative 16% If you look at the returns over the last 3 years that's a 12% degrowth in price over the last 3 years compounded whereas from 5 years back it has generated around 10% on investors money every year the debt currently is 
three years back it was 5700 so it has definitely reduced its debt over the years and currently it's standing at 1235 this is a very good scenario where the company is reducing its debts interest is just 102 crores a small value we'll compare this against the abit little later on data days is very good and efficiently managed now reduced to 19.5 days compared to 24 three years back investments is 406 crores we'll need to check out what is its balance sheet size that's 6463 crores against that this is less than 10 percent so this is okay cash equivalent is also not that substantial at 102 crores so this is also good both trade receivables and trade payables are at a reasonable level compared to the balance sheet size. Working capital is also good at 113 crores. So it has positive assets, current assets against the current liability payoff. The net blocks have reduced from where it was three years back from 7,300 to 4,215 crores. So this also will need to be checked what has happened that over the three years the company's assets have decreased instead of increasing the total balance sheet size is 6463 crores compared to where it was where it was three years back the net block was itself more than the current balance sheet size so this will need to be investigated if you are interested in investing in this company or already invested in this company the debt is very reasonable as we saw earlier the company has reduced its debt so it's just 2.74% of the current year's profits. This is a good valuation ratio. Market cap to sales is also reasonable at just 1.7. So all these ratios help us understand where we are buying into the company or at what price we are buying into the company. Profits of the total five years was 6,907 crores and very uh, and even uh, above its balance sheet size of 6,463 crores. So this is a very good value. That we should look at cash flows from operations are also coming in at 5194 crores against the profits of 6900 although low but uh, at a reasonable level free cash flows are good over the five years of 4369 and uh, a nominal amount invested in purchase of assets over these five years if we look at the price chart as of 4th december the price is 391 rupees and above it's a uh, 50 as well as 200 day symbol moving averages so not very far away from its averages earlier also if you see here there was a lot of whipshaws and although it had gone up quite considerably from its 52 week high price it had again fallen back so i generally don't rely on the moving averages as they would make you buy early and sell late so by that time either you are buying at a higher price and selling at a lower price and therefore not gaining anything out of it and therefore i rely mostly on rsi to do my buying and selling entry points the current price earning is 31 and its long term five years average pe or uh, price earning or median price earning is 11.4 so it's quite above its average price earning of the last five years if you look at the quarterly sales value it seems from 17 onwards the revenue has dropped so this will need to be investigated if there was a since uh, october 2017 the revenue seems to be have been consistently dropping and in fact in september it is quite low so this will need to be investigated as to what is causing this pressure on the company's revenues because the revenues seems to have become almost half from October 2017 onwards and even its NPM margin is quite low at 0.06 so this will need to be investigated as to why the quarterly sales have been dropping consistently because this is not a good sign for a company if you look at the positives the profits have grown at almost 100% over the last five years on a CAGR basis this too needs to be reinvestigated by going into the PL account and checking out individual values. The ROE over the last three years is 75.77%. So all of these values which are like more than 20% of growth rate or ROE of more than 30-40% all needs to be rechecked individually 
never rely on these percentages when the values are very high. Company has a low interest coverage ratio. So if it's earning such high good returns on its equity base, why is it having a low interest coverage? So check this out as well. Company has delivered a poor growth rate in sales. In fact, there's a degrowth in sales of almost 14.6% over the last five years. So this is not a good sign at all. And the tax rate paid seems low. So all of these will need to be checked and confirmed by individually going into each statement of PNL cash flow balance sheet and then looking at those values. In this video, I'm comparing Century Textiles with JK Paper and West Coast Paper. The price for Century is 406, JK Paper at 104 and West Coast at 177. All three companies seems to be more than 25% away from their 52 week highest point or they have fallen almost more than 25% from their 52 week highest point. The results are up to date till March 2020 annually and September 2020 for the quarter results. On a quarterly basis, the revenues for all three companies have fallen by more than 15%. Century Textiles seems to have fallen the most at 30%. JK Paper at 19 and West Coast at 15%. In terms of YOY degrowth in profits also, all of these three companies have seen a very high pressure on their profits as well. In fact, West Coast has gone into losses in the September quarter of around 35%. Whereas JK Paper's profits are just 34 crores and Century Textiles in a, is almost in no profit, no loss zone. So some kind of immediate pressure on a quarterly basis. If you look at the annual sales of 2020 and compare it with it the and compare it with its recent 12 months or four quarters, recent four quarters, then Century's sales have fallen from 3,400 to 2,600. Quite a drastic fall in terms of revenue generation. Profits have also fallen from 450 to 144 crores. So both sales as well as profits have seen a significant pressure. JK Papers sales have also fallen from 3000 to 2600 whereas profits from 454 to 260 crores. Again a significant fall in both sales and profits. Same is the case for West Coast Paper. So it's basically a sector wise problem. Comparing the profits and the cash flows of 2020 all these three companies have generated substantially higher cash against the profit declared. Century's cash have fallen short by around 50 crores whereas JK and West Coast have generated higher cash flows than the profits. On a long term basis the current price earning of Century Textiles is 31 whereas its long term 5 years average price earning was around 34 so which is quite uh, near to its average of the long term. JK paper is at 6.8 and below its average of the long term of five years and west coast current price earning is just eight times and uh, it's quoting above its five years price earning although these price earning are quite low they are above their averages now we we'll need to check out what is the reason why century textile is generating or is demanding such a price earning of 31 times compared to jk and west coast Price to OCF wise or operating cash wise, West Coast market cap is just 1.8 times away from the cash it is generating. So this is a good valuation. Same is the case for JK Paper, but for Century Textiles it's 11 times away from its OCF. Compared to the price earning, Century Textiles cash flow generations are good. So this is a good valuation. Price to book wise, both JK and West Coast have fallen below their net worth or book value per share basis and getting at a discount to its book value. Compare that with Century still above its book value of at around 1.2 times. As I mentioned anything any growth rate above 20 percent will need to be checked individually and both of these companies have generated more than 40 percent of growth rate in profits over the last five and three years. Whereas revenues for Century is falling by almost 23 and 14 percent over five and three years period so this is not a good case scenario 
where we want our companies to in fact to grow in sales not have not see a degrowth so this will need to be investigated as to what has happened in this company was there a demerger in this company or something like that that will need to be investigated separately jk paper sales have gone up by 7.2 and 5.2 percent so at least for jk paper both sales and profits over the long term have been growing we don't have the data for west coast as of now roe for century is low at around 13 compared to its 5 and 3 years average of around 15 50 and 75 so there is definitely something going on in this company in terms of either demerger or something like that which we need to check out individually rocs are also very high for century textile at 25 and 42 percent over the long term whereas in the recent year it has seen a substantial drop to around 9%. GK Papers ROE as well as ROCs are all above 15% whereas even West Coast is generating a good ROE although we don't have the long term average data. In terms of return on assets over the long term, Century has generated good returns of around 21%. So Century in terms of at least ROEs, ROCs has generated a very high returns I am doing a live analysis, so I have no idea as to what is happening in the company. But by just looking at these numbers, I can come to know that something has happened in this company where it is generating very high return ratios on its assets, its capital employed and equity, yet its sales are dropping or its revenues are dropping. So what is the thing that is happening in this company? So through these numbers, we can understand as to what needs to be really checked and what needs to be ignored. On their assets, Century Textile is generating just 0.69 times its revenue. So this is uh, quite low. We want our companies to generate as high sales, as much higher sales as possible against the assets employed into the business. Inventory turnover wise, all these three companies inventory to cost of goods sold or sales is quite high at around 2.3 times so this is a good value we need to check out long term values of inventory turnover and asset turnover over the years how it has managed to turn over or churn over its inventory into sales profits of the last five years for century is around 6900 crores cash flows are 5100 which is below its profits whereas free cash flows are good at around 4300 so these are values as such are good but we would want the cash flows to be higher than the profits. JK Papers cash flows are better than the profits declared whereas free cash flows are also good. On an average Century is earning around 1300 crores of profits every year whereas JK around 267 crores. The market cap of Century is around 4500, JK at around 1700 and West Coast at around 1100 crores. Net worth wise, Century is 3,500, JK at 2,300 and West Coast at 1,300. So all of these companies are very much nearby to each other. Contingent liability wise, all these three companies have a very low contingent liability against their net worth. The debt to equity ratio is highest for JK papers at 0.93 times whereas uh, Century's debt is quite low at 0.35%. We already saw against the balance sheet also it was quite low. Interest coverage yet is very low at 1.94 times. So all of these things point us to something wrong in the company or maybe we are not understanding what is happening in the company. So go deep into the company's balance sheet, the cash flow statement and, and try to understand what is wrong in this company or why these numbers are not matching up in terms of returns on equity and capital employed. Whereas even if you look at JK Paper's debt to equity, even though it's high, it has a good coverage of 4.04 times. West Coast, again the same scenario where its debt to equity is 0.4 yet not able to cover its interest cost that significantly. Promoter holding is high for all the three companies above 50% and no pledge of the promoter holding. Debtors to sales is also good efficient, they are collecting quickly from the customers, not a substantial portion is pending 
with the customers and in fact the collection days are also very good for all these three companies. The NPM margin is also very high of about 10% for all of these companies. So this is all good but then why is it still not having a good interest coverage? So that needs to be investigated. Both JK Paper and West Coast are providing above 2.5% of dividend yield whereas Century Textiles is not paying a substantial dividend. If you look at the shareholding pattern as of September, promoters are holding around 50%, FI is around 12 and DI is around 10 and public is around 27. So this is a very good spread out of shareholding pattern that we should uh, look at. If we look at the profit and loss account, in 2019 the company had received 5,673 crores from an other income either through sale of their subsidiaries or something similar to that which I am not sure of because I have not gone into that detail but from here itself we can see that earlier also the company's profits were very much haywire they were not very consistent and that is what I don't like so although it had increased in 17 earlier it made a loss of 95 in 2013 it made a loss of 34 crores and that is what I don't like inconsistencies in company and therefore I would avoid where this other income is not consistent enough so although we see 450 crores of profit and now in the recent 12 months just 145 and this particular value inflates the ROE and ROC so be very careful when analyzing a company don't rely on the very high growth ROE ROC numbers until you really check the individual numbers from the PNL account and the balance sheet as well. We can see in just in 2019 itself it has received 6000 crores and this is not the correct way of analyzing a company. Check out the individual numbers of the individual statements. Looking at uh, Century Textiles technical chart based on RSI, I have a very strong feeling here that the current week's 392 price if it closes above 393 rupees there is a very high chance that it will go up till 631 so there is a substantial gain from almost 400 to 630 rupees because there is no resistance here at all between the price of 393 and 631 also at the current rsi level of above 50 it has just moved above 50 both the lines the average as well as the rsi lines have crossed 50 so this is a very bullish sign as well as it is taking a support of 393 so based on the closing of this week that is today's date is 8th December so by Friday if it closes above 393 there is a very high probability that it will go up till 630 minimum and above that also because there is no resistance whatsoever in this company but this is this projection is purely based on technicals as far as fundamentals are concerned i'm not very confident of its fundamentals as of now because i was not able to understand why the interest coverage is so low and profitability is high yet the coverage is low so when i'm not sure about the fundamentals of a company i would like to stay away from that but purely based on technical i have a very strong feeling that this may shoot up till 630 rupees per share one can even buy at this price at 393 and going downwards at 285 254 and 208 and 160 down below that anything above that above this particular 393 line i would not consider buying into it so this concludes my detailed analysis of century textiles if you enjoyed watching this video do consider subscribing if you haven't and share it with your friends. Thank you very much for watching this video. Have a nice day.